The purpose of this video is to instruct you on proper cleaning procedures for cleaning infrared optics. The following procedures are the procedures 26 recommends to be used on new optics and optics that have been used and contaminated. The following steps will lead you through the process to clean an optic and the materials used. For this cleaning procedure, we will be using the 26 cleaning kit. This cleaning kit contains everything you need to clean optics ranging from brand new optics to optics which have been severely contaminated through use. The cleaning kit contains a small supply of lens tissue, cotton swabs, and cotton balls. We provide high quality cotton swabs and cotton balls that have been sorted to remove seeds or other impurities that might scratch the optics. We recommend fluffing cotton swabs to reduce the risk of scratching the optics. In addition to these dry supplies, the cleaning kit also contains an air bulb and liquid supply. We recommend the acetone bottle to be filled with high quality, low water content acetone. We recommend reagent grade acetone or HPLC grade acetone. The important thing on this acetone is that contains less than one half percent water. The other bottle here is for distilled white vinegar. This is another important part of our cleaning procedure that we need to have in cleaning kit. The distilled white vinegar we recommend have nominal 6% acetic acid. The two other bottles are used for more stringent and aggressive cleaning that we recommend to use only on severely contaminated optics. We have here some aluminum polish. This is liquid white polish that used abrasive cleaning steps along with the aluminum polish we recommend distilled water being used. The important thing is not to use tap water, commercially available water from your water system, because it may contain all solid or trace materials that could contaminate or even scratch the optic. The important thing to remember before doing any of the following cleaning procedure is always to wear dry, powder-free finger cots or latex gloves before handling the optics. Human skin contains oil that can contaminate optics. We recommend the use of paper body, not plastic body cotton swab that are high quality and have been sorted to remove any embedded seeds or abrasive particles. To begin any cleaning step, as we said, we want to lay the optic down on clean, dry and padded surfaces, preferably with lens tissue. This procedure details four steps moving from the most mild cleaning to very aggressive cleaning for optics that are heavily contaminated. Our first step of any cleaning procedure, always use the air bulb to blow off any loose contamination from the optic surface. We recommend limiting the cleaning of uncoated copper and bare gold optics to only this step as any contact with optical surfaces could scratch the optic. If the optic is polished on both sides, we will blow off both surfaces. We recommend you do not use compressed canned air or shop air for this cleaning. Compressed air contains significant amounts of oil, water, and also water contaminants that can actually contaminate optics. We only recommend using a dry air bulb for this step. This is the mildest step that can be done on optic. The next step is used for removing particulate that cannot be blown off. We will use acetone during this step. The acetone needs to be dispensed onto the fluffed up cotton swabs or for larger optics we recommend using a cotton ball instead of a cotton swab. To do this cleaning we will dampen the cotton swab with acetone then we will shake off the excess acetone. We will begin the cleaning by maneuvering the swab in overlapping circular motion on the optic surface. The goal of this cleaning step is for the acetone to do the work not mechanically scrub the surface. At the end of cleaning, we will always use a new cotton swab, damping again, shake off the excess, and we will finish cleaning with straight, light, overlapping strokes. The goal of this step is to eliminate any streak marks that may be left from cleaning. We will move slowly enough so that the trails of acetone evaporate just behind the cotton swab. If there are any streaks left behind, it means you probably wipe too quickly. This cleaning step can be repeated as many times as necessary. Repeated cleaning with acetone will not harm any of 2-6 coated optics. 
If the acetone cleaning alone does not remove all contamination from the optic, then we need to progress to the next level of cleaning. For this next level of cleaning, we will use the distilled white vinegar. Distilled white vinegar is useful because of its acidic nature. It can loosen and remove many types of contamination that the acetone alone cannot remove. Again, this cleaning is very similar. We will take the fluffed up cotton swab. We will dampen an acidic acid, shake off the excess, and again, we will clean in circular overlapping strokes covering the entire surface of optic. You will notice in many cases, especially on used optics, that the acidic acid or vinegar does not fully wet the surface as you can see here. This is okay. We recommend this cleaning step to be done no more than 30 seconds. Two six optics coatings and optics can withstand repeated cleaning with distilled white vinegar but 30 seconds should be sufficient to remove any contamination that is removable with acid. You will notice vinegar does not evaporate quickly. We will immediately follow this with acetone cleaning using circular overlapping strokes. In this step, we can see the acetone is mixing with the vinegar and thoroughly wetting the surface. We will follow this now with fresh cotton swab. Now we will finish with straight and overlapping strokes going slowly so that we do not leave streaks on optic. This cleaning step can be repeated as many times as necessary to leave a clean surface. Repeated cleaning with vinegar will not harm any of 2.6 coated optics. This final cleaning step is only used for severely contaminated used optics. This step should never be used on new or unused optics. In many cases, for carbon hydrocarbon contamination, environmental dirts or oils, the previous cleaning steps are very successful removing most but not all of the contamination on these optics. Metal splatter that is burned into the coating will not be able to be removed with any method of cleaning. If contamination has not been removed to this point, we will use aluminum polish to clean the surface. Again, this step is only to be used on severely contaminated optics. Never use this on a new optic. This is an abrasive cleaning as opposed to the solvent cleaning done in the previous steps. This type of cleaning method can and will eventually remove the coating. To do this type of cleaning, use the aluminum polish bottle. The polish is suspended in water. We need to shake the polish to mix it thoroughly before use. Once it's shaken, we can dispense on a cotton ball. Place a small amount of polish onto a cotton ball. We are going to use small, circular, overlapping cleaning strokes. During this cleaning, do not apply any pressure to the optic. Let the weight of cotton ball do the cleaning. This cleaning should be done no more than about 30 or 45 seconds with very minimal pressure. The abrasive nature of this polish should remove any contaminants. Watch the cotton ball for color changes. This color change can indicate that you are removing contamination, typically showing up as a mustard yellow or brown, which is good. But be careful if other colors appear, as you may be removing the outer layer of the coating and need to stop immediately. While the surface is still wet with polish, use distilled water applied with a cotton ball to remove the polish. Distilled water will loosen and lift off the polish residue from the surface. Repeat this step a few times as polish residue can be difficult to remove. While cleaning with distilled water, pay particular attention to the edge of the optic as polish may collect here and remove all polish residues in this area. Next, we use distilled white vinegar to remove polish from the surface using circular overlapping strokes consistent with previous steps. Also, ensure you clean the edge of the optic. Aluminum polish can be a high absorbing contamination if it is not completely removed from surface, so we want to be sure that we have removed all traces of the polish from the optic surface. All cleaning steps are finished with acetone because acetone evaporates quickly and removes any water from the surface. 
If any polished residue remains on the surface, we need to clean again with distilled white vinegar followed by acetone. This needs to be done as many times as necessary to be sure all traces of polish are removed from surface of optic. Remember, this is a progressive cleaning process. We should always start with very mildest cleaning method and step up to more and more stringent cleaning methods as the level of contamination dictates. Coated optics can be cleaned repeatedly with the acetone and white vinegar without any damages to coating, with the exception of bare gold, where only a blow-off is acceptable. The aluminum polish cleaning, however, due to its abrasive nature, has a limited number of times that it can be successfully done before coating is removed. Overall, we've demonstrated a progressive cleaning that can be used on brand new optics as well as severely contaminated optics that has been used in field. If there are any questions about these cleaning methods, we have a standard cleaning procedure that can be consulted as reference. Also, our website, ii-vi.com, contains identical cleaning method on the internet.